Hey everyone, Lacey here from BG Trading. Hope you had a fantastic Christmas and New Year's. We're going to be talking about in our first video of the year. What are our thoughts about the stock market and some of the stocks that we believe will do well in 2023 and could or could be keep doing well in 2023 as well. Stocks that we have been trading, some stocks that we haven't and here at BG Trading, we trade the same stocks over and over again until they change its trading behavior. We're also going to explore what are the sectors that could do well in 2023, despite this gloomy and doomy macroeconomic environment. So let's have a look. Just want to remind that this isn't finance advice. It's just us from BG Trading sharing with you how we apply our strategies to know when to buy and when to sell stocks, how we set up targets, stop losses, avoid FOMO, and much more. So if you like, please subscribe to the channel. Also, you would like to become a member of our free Facebook community called Buy, Grow, Sell Strategy for Share Traders. We post a lot of great quality analysis, content, and we have incredibly interesting conversation with some of the members. Details in the description below. Now, first of all, let's understand what's happening with ASX 200 and uh, how was uh, ASX 200 in 2022. We saw uh, it, uh, the whole market entering into a, bear, a bearish mode. And back in October and November, a lot of investors became a little bit more optimistic because Inflation and some numbers of CPI coming from US was actually positive, better than expected. And then the market rally 15% in October, November, therefore breaking its downtrend, breaking its, breaking its bearish movement. <coughs> Sorry. Then we had the correction. I've been talking about this correction. It, it was a normal correction, health correction. This correction was generated by some negative incentives on uh, sentiment in the US. Therefore, US market being sold off, but ASX holding really well. Legion stocks, on the other hand, had taken a really, really deep correction, bringing the stock back to normal levels. SME 250, simple moving average, where the average of the stock price through the last 250 days uh, supposed to be. And this also offering a very good opportunity to re-enter into some lithium stocks as well. My thoughts on lithium stocks, I already posted in a previous video. I'm still bullish about lithium. And I'm going to tell reasons why, because that is in the other video. I'm just go in and watch. Just going to put the link here on the top. But we're going to keep trading in stocks and some EV stocks as well. Now, sectors that I believe that would be um, outperforming, I think growth stocks, some growth stocks, good growth stocks in the tech sectors, and obviously the tech sector, some tech stocks that has been uh, oversold. Some stocks are trading really, really low. When you're buying an asset or buying a property, for example, you never want to really be buying a, a house and a, on, at, at the top of the market. You want to be buying at the bottom of the market. And that's what's happening. We are some, somewhere in the bottom of the market. Could fall more, could. But if you look into uh, 12 to 24 months, companies that are consistently generating some good earnings, consistently growing, sustainably growing, and most likely will do well. Okay, for the short term, we need to trade with the market. It's a trade uh, market rallies, so we buy the stocks. If the market corrects, then we sell stocks. And sometimes we need to take stop losses. So stop loss and avoid informal. Again, buying at extremely high prices are two things that traders must understand and must be willing to take. So that is that dictates how much profit you're going to lock in and how much loss you're going to allow 
have into your portfolio, especially in downturns. Remember then, market goes up really well, everyone gets excited, but then it goes down again, everyone gets really uh, annoyed and feared and the anxiety comes up, then and then we have the bounce back. On the ASX 200, I think we're going to, I mean, if it was me to predict something, we normally don't predict here, but again, I think we might even, we might still see a ASX 200 going down uh, to uh, 6,800 here before going up. And that would it be still be a health sort of movement for the market. We are currently sitting around 7,000, which is a hypothetical support level. Uh, if it doesn't hold here, 6,800 level is another hypothetical support. And then we could even see a high, all times high or just simply a, a sideways movement until we have inflation confirmed to be under control. Now, remember something. A lot of people been talking about the earnings. The company earnings are going to suffer this year. Hasn't the market already priced that in? Seem especially like growth stocks, growth stocks like uh, Zip, for example. Hasn't the market has the stock been sold about ninety seven percent already? That's not a priced in. Why people sold those stocks? Because interesting rates is going up and we're going to hurt its earnings. Right? This is already being priced in a lot of companies. Okay? Just give me an example. Another one, uh, when you saw Tyro as well, Tyro was the same problem. Obviously, um, had also the problem of some uh, blackout on the terminals, but the market sold Tyro really, really hard. And as you can see here, it recovered 160-70%. Okay? So uh, the stock was trading well under either the SMA 250, which is the pink line, and the SMA uh, 40, which is the red line. And that's when normally buy. In fact, we did our best trade in Tyro and Zip last year. Okay, so the details of those trades are in our Facebook community. Just take a look. And that's when we normally boost our positions, you know, winning positions, we boost really heavily and losing positions we take, we start cutting, trimming them uh, until they actually reverse so we can uh, get into a rally. Uh, okay, so uh, basically those uh, stocks, they're all currently trading at technically discounted prices for us. And if we ever want to be holding stocks like um, Tyro, Zip, um, EML, for example, Email is another stock that has been suffering really well. It's at 92% down, uh, currently sitting at 89% below its all times high, which was just back in 2022, uh, offering again in a company that this company in, in particular benefits from high interest rates, which is not common, right? Although people still maybe stop spending a little bit into gift cards or companies start reducing the amount of transactions, still not a bad business. It's actually a really good business. I really like email. And this is where you want to be holding those stocks. You don't want to be buying when they are on the over here, like Tyro now. Tyro was uh, reached about $1.60, $1.70. You want to be holding that. You want to be holding when they are 60, 70 cents. And then taking, uh, buying the stock, making money where you're actually buying, not when you're selling. But you need a little bit of patience. If you don't have patience, that's one of the biggest problems. If you don't have patience, then uh, you need to, then you're most likely gonna fail. When I talk about patience, it's not just to wait the stock going up, but mostly important, wait the stock to go down so you can buy at the correct prices. Okay, without thinking that you're missing the opportunity. That's the key. That's how we manage our emotions. Now let's talk a little bit about the sectors that I think is gonna do well. Uh, also gold sector, gold stocks. Look, I'm not fan of gold stocks. I don't like trading much gold stock because gold uh, doesn't actually have uh, much of fundamental value for me as a commodity, but, some gold stocks, if 
inflation is under control, what uh, the economy suggests is that uh, assets like a gold, Bitcoin, they should do well and that US dollars should start slowly declining. And the fact that US dollars will, will be declining just means that gold and other assets tend to go up. And we might see that through the second half of Okay, although we've seen already a rally in the, the measure of gold stocks. So gold stocks is interesting to have as a diversification. Um, but again, uh, a lot of the gold stocks are ha have already rally about uh, 30 to 40 percent. And you want to be buying when they go down a little bit again on the next correction. And the next correction most likely will happen if the market keeps falling so 34 percent but if you see the long-term trend is still trending under the sma 250 which means you wouldn't be buying at the full area at the moment anyway if you buy for example um Neocrest mining or let's say for example for, for example northern star northern star also trading um under the SMA 250, let's just let's just take a look where the SMA 250 is currently sitting, so we can assure what we talk, what we're saying. So SMA 250 is precisely at, and then I normally identify SMA 250 as pink line. Here you go. It's actually trading at the form area, so I wouldn't be buying this stock at the moment, okay? But keep in mind, if gold, if those stocks fall under this pink line, again, as uh, many of the stocks are falling, then that's when you want to be sort of looking at buying those stocks, okay? Uh, energy sector, I'm not a fan of a energy stack like Santos and uh, Woodside at the moment. It looks like it's not going to go uh, anywhere this year, but we never know. We never know. But I'm going, I'm going to leave those stocks for now. In fact, those stocks should be uh, profit-taking at the moment, in our opinion. Okay. Now, another stocks that, uh, if you look at the major legion stocks, and uh, we've done a video before, most of the stocks are now buy, uh, in a buying area. Lithium stocks are in the buying area with Pilbara Minerals is the only one that is not exactly in the buying area yet. We could see uh, Pilbara Minerals going down uh, uh, to, in order to be buying it. I would be buying under 350, uh, but potentially you could see going down to $3. But then the stocks like Auckland Limited, which is uh, uh, as well as uh, Pilbara, will be very profitable in 2023. Um, it's now trading at the buying area for us, a technically discounted price, and that's when we wanted to be looking to buy those stocks. Again, never when they are trading above those levels because that becomes too risky. You want to buy as close as possible. In fact, you have been trading those stocks many times through 2022. Coalition, the third one again. Um, it is a stock that at the moment I would say Coalition has a potential for uh, easily for 20 to 30 percent and perhaps even a 50 percent. There were some downgrades on those stocks, but I'm still very bullish about Lithium stocks for the reason I spoke in the last video. Uh, so I think it's still worth having those stocks on a portfolio or buying at the low and keep trading those stocks. Okay, long term is a different thing. Remember, big trading. Our view at big trading is to uh, buy, hold for one or three months, make twenty to forty percent, and uh, buy back afterwards. You know? One stock that hurt us a little bit was Novonix. Novonix, uh, we had to take stop loss. Obviously, uh, unfortunately, we took stop losses some of the stocks as well. Again, losing positions. We don't want to be buying too much by actually cutting the losing positions, you know. And then, but interesting enough, Novonix has actually uh, forming a, a very interesting pattern here at the $1.47. Uh, $1 
uh, and and that is this sort of um, uh, rally then went down and then rallied again pretty much the same level that rally with the high volumes and then went down and low volumes and that's uh, that could be an opportunity out there. I'm just gonna keep that in uh, trading at technically discounted price as well. Um, hard to pick up bottoms, obviously, but when the stocks sort of, sort of start reversing, then uh, we will see pro most likely the whole sector and the whole market reversing. That's when we want to be actually adding into positions. You know, at the moment we're still just watching, uh, adding a little bit, but watching uh, these stocks. We're not currently holding off warnings, to be honest. We took a stop loss. Um, then. Obviously, we have some uh, tech stocks, which I think will be the stocks to have on the portfolio this year. Definitely tech stocks, good quality tech stocks. Uh, we could see um, on on its rally on the way up, like zero is one of them. Uh, I reckon zero could fall around 60 to $50 dollars before it start bouncing back. But at the moment, this is a stock that is continuously growing and uh, it is trading at buying area, most definitely. You don't want to be buying when it's $140, okay? You want to be buying now, according to our strategy, okay? So, uh, again, it's not a financial advice. We're just reflecting what our strategy says. In how we read stocks, okay? Remember, we want to buy assets at standard prices. Uh, another one is uh, Megaport. Obviously, stock that we've been trading. Uh, I'm even uh, ready to say that we could even, uh, this is going to be a stock that buying $6 could well go to over $12 in the, in the medium term some stage this year, and we will be looking at over 100% uh, profit in this uh, stock by under $6. So it is an interesting stock to go. And then uh, obviously increasing its um, uh, sales and and then and, and a very, uh, uh, it's a very good company to, to have as well. So yeah, so this is some of the stocks that we think, some of the sectors that we believe will do well. Uh, I or is always a, a big question mark. I was the, I actually got wrong on the IOR last year because we, we thought uh, this uh, recession, potential recession would bring IOR price down. But actually we had a really big rally in the forest queue and most of IOR stocks um, you know, and then would I buy IOR now? Not, I wouldn't buy any IOR stock right now. I just would wait for when this, those, these stocks, like this is for SQFMG, when it goes down again, then uh, then this is the time to buy, not at the FOMO area. I own stocks now trading at the FOMO area. Uh, some members have been asking me about finance. So let's go with CBA, for example, which is Australian leading uh, bank um, currently trading, taking a little downturn. So I wouldn't be buying too expensive at the moment, but if it reaches uh, levels around $80, then I wouldn't think twice. That's probably where we wanted to be buying those stocks about $80. Okay, remember what happened with these stocks uh, back when we had the COVID crash. Okay, now uh, Macquarie Bank. Macquarie Bank is another stock that we are watching, and I would be interested buy Macquarie Bank if reached around $150, currently downtrend. It could well go to $150, and then I think that would be an interesting buying opportunity for Macquarie Bank. Okay, so this is some of the stocks that uh, we've been always watching, be trading be discussing with our VP members. So if you're not part of our community, make sure you get on board. We love what we do, and we're going to be posting individual analysis, market analysis, all through 2023, as well as we've been doing 2021 and 2022. Okay, guys, have a fantastic year. I will see you in the next video. Please put your comments at the description below. If you agree with our, what we're saying, if you don't agree, put why you are not agreeing, every comment brings value to our community. 
I will see you in the next video. Bye. The whole idea when we designed BG Trading BGS 20 strategy was to use only a set number of indicators to make it simple and clear to understand and to be able to apply our KPIs very easily and very effectively. So you don't have to be any Wall Street smart person to be able to apply those strategies. We really hope this course will help you to make better decisions and make successful trades. See you in the course.